the VAR show the one place for your weekly football update Hola a very warm welcome to the VAR show the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail so today we are going to continue the theme of interviews and we have a very influential figure in terms of Bangladesh footballing culture as of today and hopefully in the future also we have the coach of Abaini Limited Dhaka team Mr Mario Lemos so for our listeners who do not know about Abaini Limited Dhaka so they are a professional sports club based in Dhaka Bangladesh and in the domestic scene they have achieved a record 6 Bangladesh football premier league titles so that's not very less they have a quite a good reputation and as for mr mario lemos he is the current head coach of dhaka baini as i just said and he's a former portuguese player and he has also worked with a lot of teams around asia and also was the fitness coach of bangladesh national team previously he has also led dhaka baini to the 2019 afc cup of the south asian zone and he also came out runners up in the bangladesh premier league in the year 2019 so without wasting much time we will get straight into the interview and first before that we would like to thank mr mario for coming on the show thank you so much mario for coming on the show and we would like to begin the interview by asking you how are you and what are you doing during this pandemic period thank you very much for for having me it's my it's my pleasure You know, at the moment, I'm, I'm still in Bangladesh. Unfortunately, I couldn't leave the country due to the pandemic, and I'm doing almost like everybody. I'm just staying at home, indoors. I'm not going outside. I'm just waiting, really, to to, to go back home. So, uh, we'll jump straight into the uh, footballing part. So, your first experience in Bangladesh was as a fitness coach with the national team. Yes. So now you work. for probably one of the biggest if not the biggest club in the country yeah. so many league titles that abani has won how is the footballing culture of bangladesh you know like compared to other countries you have been in yeah i had the, the, the chance to work with the national team and then come back as a head coach of abani i think you know in bangladesh i think 50 60 years ago the football was the main sport of the country abahani like you said is, is one of the biggest club was abahani in mohammedan and uh, but unfortunately now football went a little bit down the cricket rise up you know the cricket is the main sport in the country but it is developing you know uh, there's the leagues are more professional uh, the clubs are investing more 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 you know you see this year you have like players like barkosh play for national team he's playing for bashundara then the league is getting better more professional more organized i think the next step for bangladesh is the youth football you know the youth football is still Uh, lacking a little bit there's not many academies there's not a lot of youth departments that that's i think the next step for bangladesh is, is to invest in the youth system so how is the infrastructure in bangladesh like in terms of football about the leagues infrastructure of football ah uh, infrastructure about the, the, the stadiums and stuff like that to training camp yes yeah. Well, it's you know most of the clubs are based in Dhaka, you know, and and I think now this year we have six, seven teams that play at the national national stadium. Every team they have their own, they have their own uh, training facilities. You know, of course, Abani, like you said, it's a bigger club that we're lucky. We have their own training field. We have gym. The players stay at the, at the club. They have their own rooms, kitchen, everything. Then, but yeah, most of the clubs is like they run this way. They have their own facilities. They have their own field. And and last year, actually two years ago, all the games were played in, in Dhaka. But now the BFF wants to to share football all around the country. Then some teams now you have already, I think five or six teams playing outside of Dhaka. Then you you travel, we play in other cities. Yeah. So you are very young in terms of coaching, and you uh, as a coach, and you also started very young as yeah. a coach. Can you tell us something about your playing career? Like I could not find anything. So if you could enlighten me a little bit, because at your age, you know, you have been a lot of places in terms of a coach. You know, like yeah. it's very rare. Yeah, in my country, I don't, I don't think too rare. I think I think it changed, but but no doubt, yes, it's a little bit. 
basically what, what I did, like every young boy in Portugal, I played from, from very young age uh, in clubs, you know, futsal and football. And I did all my youth from what, U7 to the seniors. Uh, the seniors, yeah, I played all, all the group stages, I played football. The thing was, when I was, I think, around 2021, 20, I, I didn't think I was going to have a, a great career as a player. Then I made a, I made a, op I, I made the option. I went to study to the university. And the moment when I went to study, through the club I played, also they offered me to start coaching. And to be honest, when I started coaching, I thought I'm better a coach than a player. <laughs> and I think this is something I should invest. And I started coaching very young, maybe 20, 21. And then when I, I started, I, I stopped playing and I dedicated myself just to coaching. That's why now maybe I'm 33, I already have maybe, I don't know, two, 12 years, 13 years already of coaching. And it's quite a lot for, for my age, actually. So now we'll move on to your last season. That was a 2018-2019 season in the league. You finished second, you know, behind Basundara, I guess. And uh, I just wanted to know, because outside of Bangladesh, we really do not know much about the Bangladesh Premier League. The football, yeah. how competitive is the league? Yeah, you know, it's competitive. You have clubs like Bashunara. Bashunara is, is a new club that invested a lot of money, that bringing a lot of players. But you still have Abahani, you have Sheikh Russell, is a good club. Saif also is a, is a new club, but also a good club. Then you have five, I would say four or five teams that fight for the for, fight for the championship, and then you have the rest that fight a little bit for relegation. But the quality of football is, is is rising now. This year in the Bangladesh, you also have the rule you can have five foreigners. Then it makes the league much more competitive. And as you saw, you know, the teams, you saw Abani in the AFC Cup last year. You know, they, they did very well. Bashundar also this year started very well in their, their AFC campaign. Then I think the level of, of Bangladesh football is getting better. So, uh, you also won the South Asian Zone AFC Cup in 2019, that was last year. Yeah. So, how was the experience? Like... It, was, you know, it was a good experience. For me, it was the first time I competed in the AFC Cup. And I think that it was good for everybody because, of course, the Abahani wanted to win, but the, there was not high expectations because they never went through the group stage. I think the maximum was four points they've made. And we had a tough group. We had, you know, ISL champions uh, Chennai. We went to Nepal to play Manang, a very good team. Also, we never punch up for India. And it was a great experience. You know, we took game by game. You know, we, we did enough points to, to qualify for the next the next uh, stage. It was the first time ever a club from Bangladesh you know, became South Asia champions. It was a great experience. Very good for, for us, for the players. You know, we played in, in the, had the chance to play in different countries, different fields against different players. I was very good for, for the team, for sure. So, I would like to ask you, since you are from Europe and you have spent quite a lot of time there, what is the quality of the AFC Cup, you know, like the one you won last year? In turn, ah, that's a good question, huh? <laughs> no, no, you know, the, it's, 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 a good, it's, it's, it's better than what people think. It's, it's really a tough, tough competition. You play against, oh, well, you're playing against the champions, even if it's not the Champions League, but it's... it's it's the champions of Nepal, the champions of India. In, in Super League is a really good league, and uh, so it's really. Good. I would say I don't know. I, I don't. It'd be hard to compare, but the quality of football played is different. Also, the big difference what I felt in the AFC was tactically, the big difference between the BPL and the AFC Cups. Teams are much better prepared tactically, physically. It's much harder to win a match in the AFC Cup, no, no doubt. So, uh, now we'll move a little bit to the tactical side. So, if you had to describe yourself as a coach, what is your, how would you describe your team? You know, like your game system, maybe? Yeah, you know, my game system changed a little bit, you know, <laughs> in, in, in Bangladesh, a little bit, just in Bangladesh. You know, we always have this idea. I think you know, coming from Portugal, you know, you want to have possession, you want to attack, you always want to control every moment of the game. But you must understand where you are, I think. And, and you know, one thing is difficult sometimes in Bangladesh is, you know, basic stuff like playing from the back. When you play in very bad pitches and your goalkeeper doesn't feel confident, then you, you must adapt. And, you know, my idea, I always want to have, you know, possession. I want to attack. I want to control the game. But I also, I really enjoy, and I think one thing, 
why we were successful in, in the AFC Cup is I really like my teams to be disciplined and organized when defending. Very, very disciplined and organized. I don't like my teams to concede goals. Uh, I like to attack, no doubt, but I don't like to, to concede. And I think an AFC Cup, that was the message we gave to the players. Because in the BPL, you can attack, you can press high, you can make mistakes and you still win. In the AFC Cup, is different. The moment you make a mistake or you take too much risks, you know, Chennai will, will kill you. You know, Manang Marshandi will, will, will take advantage. And that's one thing I, I wanted. And I think one reason is last year we were not champion. It was defensively we were not good enough. And this year is something I'm, I'm really consistently in. organized and disciplined when defending. And of course, having control, trying to create the most chance possible, playing positive, playing aggressive, with passion, with energy, and, you know, trying to win every game we play in. So you said you like your team to be defensive, like, you know, very disciplined. So, uh, which one do you prefer, man marking or zonal marking, or a hybrid? No, I, I would go. We defend in zone and in, in zone most of it. We defend in zone. But if we, uh, I tell you honest, I remember in some moment, not every moment in the game. You don't say we're old school, but I remember we playing Chennai, and we we didn't allow, we didn't want at the time was Chris Hurd, the midfield. We didn't want. Uh, also, when we played Manang Marshandi, we, we, what's his name? Was it Guru? Number 10. You know, do you know him? Guru is a yeah, yeah. Anil Guru. Anil Guru. I think so. I think so. Most probably, I, I think it's him. Very good player. Technically left foot. Then these type of players, you must keep an eye on him. And then sometimes in, in some moments of the game, we say, every time he receives the ball, let's force him to play back. We must, not always the same player, man to man, but some players, sometimes we got to force them, not allow them to play. So, uh, if like uh, since you have been like in so many uh, places and like, what is your favorite formation? Like, do you have a formation you use for maybe uh, the BPL and a different formation for the AFC, or is it similar to what you use? I know we change a little bit. We we played four three three in the BPL uh, because in the BPL, like I said, we're a dominant team. We can attack a lot. In the, in the um, AFC Cup, we played 4 2 3 one And when we played the semifinals against the North Koreans, and we did it a couple of times, we played into a, a 3 5 2, but to be honest, it was more a 5 3 2 against them. It was more a 5 3 2. Then we, sometimes we change. But a 4 2 3 1 will be my the, the formation I usually use. And then, depending who we play, or sometimes injuries we can change the way we play also. And, so on. like uh, since you have been you have had so much experience in the Asian part you are you are the uh, South Asian zone champion so out of your all your experience in Asia which is one coach or one team well, which was the most difficult to play against Good question, huh? uh, you know I, I'll be honest I think the two teams I think I, this is very honest Manang Marshandi was very difficult in Nepal because first they played in the artificial pitch right and the, 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 the tempo they played, that was one of the toughest games we had. And uh, I would say the 425 North Korea in North Korea. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Very, very difficult. They don't allow you to breathe. <laughs> you you try to play, but they don't allow you to play. It was one of the teams that played for us. The intensity they played from the beginning of the match to the end of the match, they, they didn't stop. It was unbelievable. That's why they went three times to the final. Huh? So like uh, like how you spoke about the North Koreans and how they play. So how I would like I would like to ask you like how is the fan culture in uh, Bangladesh about the football because it's a more mostly cricket dominated country. So how is the fan culture in Bangladesh? The fan culture, unfortunately, I don't like to use this word, but it's dying a little bit. I think you know, 30, 40 years ago the stadiums were full, not now. And I think because of Dhaka is a so busy city, people in, in Dhaka, I won't lie to you, maybe 1,000, 2,000 people come to the stadium. The good thing is when we play outside of Dhaka, in smaller cities, you know, people come to the stadium. Not so many, but there's more people coming to the stadiums. But and unfortunately, and I feel the Bangladesh people, they, they like football, they, they know about football and I think they, they have more interest for Barcelona and Real Madrid than... <laughs> for Abahani or any other team, but it's a shame. We're trying to change this and trying to bring people to the stadium because that's the most important thing. 
So now, since you mentioned Barcelona and other European giants, which is your favorite football club from the around the world? You know, ah, you know, I, I, I'll be going. I, I follow Mourinho. You know, where Mourinho goes, I follow. <laughs> I, I follow him. You know, and yeah, I'm a big Mourinho fan. And usually, I was Manchester United. I changed to Tottenham. <laughs> I'm not a. But yeah, that's one of my favorite. Coach, okay, so uh, uh, talking of Mourinho, do you, like. Uh, do you have any other coaches whom you look up to or you are inspired from? Yeah, you know, of course. I, I, that's one of the things I think Mourinho. When we talking about, um, you said, well, I started at a young age. I think Jose Mourinho changed that that in Portugal. You know, before, I, of course, I wanted to be a football player like everybody. But the moment Mourinho had success as a football coach uh, and not being a top player and not being one of those big names. It changed a lot of young people. I see now even young people that want to want to become coaches, and I think Mourinho was the first one. But yeah, now from top of my head, I like Mourinho. Who do I like more? Now, I, you know, Guardiola, of course, is a great coach. Bielsa also is a great coach. Uh, Klopp, oh, you know, all these top managers. I try to to follow all and, and try to learn a little bit from everyone. You know, different styles. So- of So, do you think that Mario Lemos, as a player, would get into your team? Nah, no way. Too lazy. It's too lazy. <laughs> that was my problem. I was too lazy. I was, yesterday, I was speaking with a friend of mine, and I think when I played, I was too lazy. I didn't. Now I can see myself as a coach. I said, "My God, this guy was too lazy. <laughs> He didn't work enough. It'd be very hard. Impossible to get in the team." <laughs> <laughs> so. Since you started at very young, uh, and maybe many coaches can uh, relate to you. Do you have any words for any young coaches who are starting out? You know, right now. Yeah, for sure, you know. And I started. To be honest, I started from, from I was U12 in a small club in Portugal, and now I'm coaching uh, the biggest club in Bangladesh, and I coach in the Super League in Malaysia. It's, it's you, you gotta put work. You know, you gotta put work. You gotta be humble. You gotta work a lot. And of course, it takes. It's it's harder for. I won't say people. Like, it is for people that don't come from. If you're not a, a big ex player, if you're not a fame, you know, it, it's, it, it takes more time, and you gotta prove yourself because like people don't know you. So who is this guy? Then you gotta work. It takes time. Sometimes things don't happen your way. A lot of times don't happen, and you but you gotta keep on going. And it's a journey, you know, and step by step. And hopefully you can get there, but it's it's a lot of work. A lot, yeah. but if you have passion, it's not work. You, you, you go for it and you enjoy it. And at least for me, it's been a, a passion of mine. Coaching, of course, sometimes you want to be a better. You want to be here, but you're still here. But with time you you'll get there. You get there. And when you get your chance, of course, this is football. When you get your chance, you must show it. People don't want results tomorrow. They want yesterday. And when you, you when you get the, the opportunity. You must be ready. This is one thing I tell people, and sometimes people. I was talking yesterday to a young coach, and he was telling me of, of an offer, and I asked him, "Do you know the players of that team?" He said, "No." Do you know the players of that league? No. You're not ready. You gotta get this information. You know, you gotta. If you're ready, it will be much easier. If you're not ready, it, it's it's hard, huh? Because it takes some time. But if you're prepared, I think, and yeah, you can do the job. Hopefully. So on that note, I'll ask you a very very controversial. Question: You have to very, you have to think a lot, Mario, and then only answer. Yeah. This will be very big controversy. So, whom do you prefer, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? Oh, my friend, that's not, that's not. Hey, if I go to Portugal, they kill me if I say Messi. I cannot answer Messi. <laughs> they cut my neck and say, of course, uh, Ronaldo. I'm Portuguese. I gotta go with Cristiano Ronaldo. Not even, <laughs> no doubt. Oh. But Messi, oh. Messi is a great player, great talent, great. I love Messi, but. You know, being a little bit patriotic, you know, Ronaldo is one of mine. <laughs> I gotta go with Ronaldo. Okay, I'll make it a little bit more easier for you. Whom do you prefer, Eusebio or Ronaldo? I know, I, this is tough. I didn't, I didn't see much Eusebio play. Yeah, I didn't see him a lot. You know, I, I still go with Ronaldo, but Eusebio was a great player also. Uh, Okay. On that note, uh, Mario, thank you so much for talking to us, and we wish you all the best for your future campaigns. We wish you in the uh, AFC Champions League next, and the Bangladesh Premier League, and win possibly every trophy you can. And hope <laughs> we can talk again soon. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. 
थैंक यू थैंक यू